I really stress the business side behind it because when I first got in this business, I was creative and I had a good eye. I could put outfits together, but I didn't have a lot of good business sense. Part of it because I was young and the yeah. other part is I had never been an entrepreneur, so I didn't know the rules or how it worked. Mm. And I had to figure it out as I made mistakes and corrected them and figured it out as I went. <laughs> Everybody out there in eye to eye land, idea to invention. This is your boy Garrett, sitting here solo on this day. Oh, my my my, my running buddy. She kind of hemmed up. She she ain't here. No, but all oh, honesty though, she <laughs> she um, is is under the weather and unable to join us today. But that's all right though. That's all right. Cause here in eye to eye, we keep it rolling. We keep it moving. And so today we have one of the loveliest people <laughs> you will ever meet. And too bad y'all can't see it. Well, you, know, you will be able to see her through YouTube. I wish you were here. <laughs> <laughs> but I am. We have Miss Ivanya Easley, Yay. <laughs> the CEO and founder of Love E Fashion. Thank you for having me. Oh, you are so, so welcome. Thank you really for being here. I really appreciate it. So, the intent of our conversation is to educate those who may have an idea mm -hmm. and need to take that idea, whether it's a product or a service, um, to an invention, to an actual product, yeah. to an actual, right, to go from... A to Z. Yes. And definitely understand that process. Right. But 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 you can understand that when you go from A to Z, mm -hmm. all these other letters in the middle. It's a lot. That's, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> right? And and there's not much how do I say free offering information to help you get from A to Z and deal with all those letters in between. I agree. So <laughs> the purpose of this mm -hmm. is to help those who are trying and struggling, who are small business, who are, who are sitting in their cubicle knowing God has given them a gift. Yeah. Um, knowing that there's a passion that they, that their mama been telling them, their grandma, been, you know, you might want to do that. You yeah. might want to look deeper into that and helping them have some, um, confidence to make that leap. Yeah. Um, but to make that leap educated, an yeah. educated leap, right? You don't want to just jump. Yeah. And you end up drowning. You want to have a calculated risk when you Ooh. are an entrepreneur. Y'all look. See, you know, I, look, I, I'm bringing y'all good talent here. I'm bringing y'all <laughs> some good information, some folks with some knowledge. Now, Y'all got my contact information. <laughs> you can pay me very easily, cash app. No, I'm just, <laughs> but, but okay. So let, let's 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 jump into. Give us who Ivanya is. So let's let's start from the beginning. Okay. Right, and give us give us a tidbit about who you are, because in the in the following other segments, we'll dive deeper into my business, the business. Yeah. But we want we want people to know. Yeah. Hey, you're just like everybody else, yeah. Yeah. right? And we so give us who you are. Well, yes, I'm Ivanya Easley, and um, before I was an entrepreneur, I actually was an accountant. So I went to school for poli-sci, uh, minored in psychology, and then when I got a master's in finance. So okay. this was definitely a, a straight path to entrepreneurship. Um, also, I'm older than what people might think I am by looking at me. So I remember when social media did not exist. <laughs> So the job I created for myself or the business I created for myself was not something that I thought was even a real job mm -hmm. when I was growing up. I was raised that you graduate high school, you go to college, you get a good job, and that's it. And that's it. Um, you don't try to do anything beyond that. So when I first started a business, my family was not like super supportive. They were like, oh, you know, you're smart. You can do better. You have two degrees. Why would you want to play with clothes all day? That is not what I do. <laughs> but sometimes when you hear about creative jobs especially yeah then you assume like oh, okay you know you're not it's not a serious job because I'm not like a surgeon or mm -hmm. something but I am making transformation in people's lives oh yeah 
So, mm, oh, there was so much, so much to unpeel in that, y'all. So, okay, all right. So, you, where did you, where did you go to school? So I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, so you were a baby? Yes. You were native. But I wasn't raised here, so I was oh, born okay. here and right. I left. So <laughs> yes, I was born here, so I still rep the A. Okay. But I was born here, and then I grew up in Charleston, South Carolina. So I'm still a Southern okay. girl, still the South. I came back um, when I was 26, okay. back to Atlanta. So I've been back for that's over 15 years. I wow. think something like that. 2006. So it's been a minute. Okay. That's when I got back. Um, when I got back here, I was working, like I said, in finance. Um, when I went to school for undergrad, I, like I said, majored in poli sci. So I thought I was going to go to law school. Oh. When I graduated, though, um, there were no local law schools in Charleston at the time. You had to go to Columbia, South Carolina, which was like oh. two hours away. Okay. I had just got married and had my daughter. So it wasn't really feasible as a new wife and mom to try to drive two hours every day to right. go to work. Um, or to go to law school, rather. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, what am I going to do now? Because yeah. the thing about poli sci, unless you actually go and be a paralegal, you there's no job to do. You either be a paralegal, which is a whole nother career path, or you go straight to law school. There is not right. a job you can do in the meantime between law and poli sci. Right. So because I put myself through college working at banks and credit unions and financial institutions. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Did you say you put yourself through college? Yeah, because, you know, financial aid didn't cover everything. And at oh. the time, I'm the oldest out of my siblings, so my parents weren't in a position to cover my school. And I went to a private Christian school, so the tuition was a little bit more expensive. So you don't, you don't look old enough to understand the fact that, yes, you may have to work through school to pay. Oh, yeah. I've been working since I was 15. I've always been one of those people, if I want something and you're not going to give it to me, then I need to go and work and get it. So I still have that mindset. Mm. All right. Come on. All right. <laughs> Keep on going. Come on. So um, I went to school, but while I was in school, I worked at, like I said, a credit union and banks. And I found that, well, I was doing retail like in high school. But okay. then when I got in college and I realized the bank was paying $10 an hour, and this is back when minimum wage was like $4 mm -hmm. and some change, I was like, oh, this is a no brainer. And I don't have to work nights, weekends. I'm off major federal holidays. I was like, the bank is the place to be. Right, right. So I would go to like 8 o'clock class, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and then go straight to the bank. Okay. Um, and so at the time, my daughter was a baby because uh, she was born when I was a freshman in college. Okay. So I was going to school, working, taking care of her, and nursing at the time because she was a newborn. So okay. I nursed the first year. So it was a lot. But um, I guess I attribute it to being young because I'm like, where did I find the energy to be able right, to do Right, because, I mean, it, it was like a but, natural hustle that you was just like, no, this is what I got to do. Yeah, I'm gonna make yeah it I didn't want to slow down and stay home with the baby and then go to school later. I was like, no, I can do it all at one time. I can make it work. So I did. But like I said, because I was working in banks when I graduated college, that was the only skill set I had was the financial, uh -huh. cash handling, et cetera. So that's how I got into accounting. It wasn't okay. planned, but it was where I could make money right out I got out of college. So that's how I ended up accounting. When I moved to Atlanta, I worked for nonprofits doing accounting. <laughs> and I thought about doing like PricewaterCooper and all of that right. and sent for my CPA. But then the market crashed, 2008. So the bubble finally popped and it had trickled down to us regular people. And I lost my job. Okay. <laughs> so we go... See, that's a good spot to hold on. <laughs> and the reason why I say this is because there are so many people who went through the exact same thing. And what they need to know and now gather from you is that at that point, shift happened. Yes. Got to right? be able to pivot. Got dog it, Ivanya. So we need you to educate and help people understand because of um, the problems that happened, the life-changing events that happened, how you were able to pivot. Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, uh, it was know. really hard. Um, but that's okay. No, we, we, we're going to talk about it when we come back. All right. So, everybody, mm, you, better stay, you better stay tuned because this is your boy Garrett on Eye to Eye sitting with the lovely Vanya Easley. And you don't want to miss what's coming up next. We'll catch you on the other side. What makes America? You. Me. Every freckle. Every career. Every smile. Every tear.
each family, each friend. It builds and makes us who we are, one community. Every boy, every girl. Each kink, each curl. We wouldn't change a thing because this is who we are. It's our differences and our similarities, our passions and our fears. These are the things that keep us. These are the things that make America. Us. Our curls make us. We are America. We make Tangle Master. Hey, eye to eye, this is Garrett coming back to you with the lovely Vanya Easley sitting in the chair next to me. Um, for those who did miss the opening of this particular podcast, um, a little bit of background about Ivanya. Ivanya is the CEO and founder of Love E Fashion. Um, Ivanya is a certified pers um, personal stylist and a published author with over uh, a decade of experience, worked with hundreds of clients to achieve their personal best. She recently built a style by Love, by Love E, a uh, mobile app where you can order a personal stylist to shop, deliver, and style you. Therefore, making personal style accessible to the masses, fashion at your fingertips. She's worked with uh, New York Fashion Week, TBS, Fox, HLN, CNN, MSNBC, VH1, Disney, just to name a few. She's someone you need to know. So we're gonna continue our conversation. She was just highlighting and educating us on when she started out in accounting by by degree, right, and, and, and by training and education and um, was working in South Carolina and the banks because she was working through school and so forth and then transitioned here to um, the Atlanta area. Um, and then the world took a shift in 2008. Yes. And there was a bubble burst. Yes. So, and she brought up a really good word. It's called pivot. And so she's going to educate us on using that time frame and using that story yeah. on how pivoting became essential. So continue your, your, your story. Yes. So along with while I was doing the accounting and being a mom and the whole nine, um, I always loved clothes and fashion. I always loved dressing myself. Mm -hmm. And then I would help my family, my mom. Um, my dad would always send me out to buy her gifts. Okay. So every time her birthday anniversary, because he was into clothes too. My mom, not so much. She wanted to look nice, but she didn't care about the process. So he would always be like, go buy your mom's these outfits. And he would pay me. <laughs> to go and get them for her yeah. every year. So I was already doing it, but I didn't think it was a real job. It was just something I enjoyed doing. So because I was dressing my family, then I started dressing people at church and friends and family and friends of those people that I had met. And I still did not think this was a job. It was just a little fun hobby on the side while I was doing my actual job that paid me. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this all along since 2001 on the side as I was doing my actual real job, as I thought, because I just did not think this was a possibility that I could turn it into a whole livelihood and career. So let me ask you a question. So, so stay right there, though, because we're mm -hmm. going to continue the story. Mm -hmm. But I have a question. Why did you think that it wasn't? Because I had never job? seen that. I think in Charleston, I feel like if maybe if I grew up in L.A. or New York, maybe. But in yeah. Charleston, there were no creative jobs besides you be a hairdresser. I didn't even know of any makeup artists because if you were a makeup artist, you usually had to work for Mac or work for one of the counters. That right. wasn't really a professional makeup artist that okay. worked on her own. So for me, I just didn't see that. I've never seen any stylists in real life until much later. Wow. Um, the only ones you saw were like, oh, they're working for the magazines. None of those magazines were published in Charleston. Right. Um, so, yeah, okay. uh, I just didn't see it. So, so you, And I so, think you can't see, you can't become what you don't see. So representation mm. is really important. 
Oh, that's ooh, okay. All right, so continue. You, you, were, you were talking about your daddy and, yeah. and shopping for your mama. Yeah, so I shop for family, friends, and mm-hmm. growing up in Charleston, we had like how Atlanta has Lennox and Phipps. We had this little strip called King Street, and that's where all the nice stores were. Okay. So I was down there shopping all the time for myself because once I got this, you know, good bank job, um, I was like, oh, I'm not a broke college student anymore. <laughs> once I graduated, I was shopping all the time. So the stores got to know me, and we built a relationship. And then one day I went to a fashion show and this magazine was doing it. And at the time it was like L'Oreal was backing it, okay. the big company. Okay. And so the next year, for whatever reason, they couldn't do it. And so they were like, hey, every time we see you, you're so stylish. Would you do this fashion show for us? And we'll pay you. So this was like my first big official real wow. job that wasn't like friends or family. And that is what first put the spark in me. Like maybe this could be a real hmm. job. But that okay. was the first time. And that was 2005 because I was getting ready to come to Atlanta. Okay. okay. Um, so that was the first job. And when I did it, I was just like, you know what? I think I can do this. So when I moved to Atlanta and it was a bigger city, I started reaching out to people here like, hey, I'm really interested in style, fashion, you know, whatever. Do you know of anyone? Can you refer me? And so I met a hairdresser and she did hair for New York Fashion Week and hair for the Bond Brothers show here in Atlanta. Okay. So she was like, I'll connect you with a stylist. So then I started interning and connecting with different people in the industry, all while still working my accounting job. So right. by the time 2008 did roll around, I had been doing the fashion um, behind the scenes, nights and weekends this whole time. So I was doing them dual at the same time. So when the bubble crashed, it just made me become more proactive than reactive. When I had a job, it was like, oh, yeah, I'll do a style job whenever I feel like or when it comes up or when it makes sense for me. When I lost my job, it was like, hey, I'm available full time. Do you know of anybody? I want to work with photographers. I want to work with whoever. Right. Now, quickly. Right. Because at the time um, I had got divorced. So my personal life was not as stable in regards to a two income household. Mm-hmm. Um, working as an accountant, I had got a house. I had my daughter. I had a little BMW. I was like, how am I going to pay for all this stuff if I don't have a job? Right. So I ended up renting out half my house to somebody and she ended up stopped paying her rent. I had to evict her. So it was like a whole thing. Ooh, you um, lessons you, <laughs> you was going but, through. But um, when I did lose my job, because I did want to pursue this, I gave up like getting my hair done, nails done, cable, and just tried to cut back where I could. Um, and then my family really stepped in supporting me. My friends stepped in and like brought groceries by. So like I said, the first year was really hard, but I was determined to kind of like, I lost my job. So this is a chance to see if I can sink or swim. And I've been swimming ever since. So, okay, <laughs> you said some real, mm, some good stuff. Okay, so let's talk about the fact that the parallelism of what you were doing, because right? some people don't get the fact that when you want to start a business and you have the luxury, I count it a luxury, of being able to do things in parallel. Yeah. Um, help folks understand your mindset on why, why that was just such, because the way, the way, when you say it, it sounds like it was just a natural thing for you to do. You're just like, look, I'm doing this stuff in parallel because I know where I'm going. Yeah. So I think once that idea was planted in Charleston, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I moved to Atlanta. It's a bigger city. They probably have a bigger market for what I'm trying to do. So I was thinking in my mind, I would eventually pay off a lot of stuff, save up a lot of money, and then eventually try to become an entrepreneur. Okay. But I was forced into it a couple of years early because I lost my job. So the plan was eventually to become an entrepreneur once I got here and start um, interning and networking and building these relationships. I was like, you know what? I might can do this, yeah. but I want to do it the safest way possible. Like I want to have no credit card debt. I want my car paid for. Okay. I want to have this amount of money in the savings. And none of that happened. I had to step out on faith. So when I <laughs> lost my job, I didn't have the credit cards paid off. I didn't have the savings because, you know, when you're working, you kind of feel like, oh, I can save next paycheck or I can save for it later. Like, you don't think it's going anywhere. And then once it does, it's like, oh, wait a minute. So I got to figure some things out. And, of course, losing my job and starting a business in the recession, I was just struggling to make sure that me and my child still had a home and food to eat. So at that point, it was like, I'm not worried about trying to pay off anything. I'm just going to try to survive. So 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 looking at that, right, looking at that point in time, hindsight, um, 
what do you see was good about that? Because there, there's, I want to hear from you, but I can mm-hmm. tell you where, where your good was, but I want to hear to see where you thought your good, where you, you now are saying, oh, no, I was doing X and X and X. Oh, no, it was good. Yeah, I think it's one, um, really strengthened my faith. Like, okay. I believe in God. Yep. I, I was raised in church, but I don't. I think we all say we have faith, and then when it's tested, mm. you realize like how much faith do you really have? Really so have. at the end of the day, and especially now, because entrepreneurship is such a roller coaster. Like it's good, yep. it's bad, then it's good again, and then it slows down. So you have to go with the ebbs and flows. Yep. So at this point, now that I've been an entrepreneur for over ten years. I always look at like, oh, everything always work itself out. It always does. So I don't stress. It's going to work itself out. Everything's going to be fine. And then I'm, you know, more seasoned in what it is that I do. Um, I have tripled my income from what I was doing Mm -hmm. back then. And I have the freedom to, you know, choose the kind of clients I want to work with and have the kind of life that I want to have. We only get one. So I feel like we all have to work for a living, but at least if I'm going to work, I'm going to do something that I'm passionate about, that I love, that's helping people and, um, you know, be able to live life on my own terms. So with that, I, I see that the parallelism, mm-hmm. you were building your foundation. Yeah, even though I didn't realize it. And you didn't realize it. <laughs> Right. You were building relationships. Yeah. You, you, you were building connections that that was going to sustain you. When. A catastrophe part happened. Yeah. And I still have those same relationships that I started back then. And see, the thing <laughs> is, see. But at the time, I didn't realize didn't how realize it all it. work was working out but, together but look, for the good. <laughs> you hear me? God was already, see, the thing is, you were so busy. You were so busy running. You were so busy hustling. Yeah. You were so busy trying to make sure that ends were meeting. You were so busy, so busy, so busy, so yeah. busy that you couldn't see that God was like, no, no. I'm, Until much later. I, I'm, I'm helping, I'm, I'm, I'm helping putting pieces in place for my child. Yeah, it was definitely positioning. Oh. That I didn't realize. You didn't, but, but the thing is, if you would have realized it while you were going it, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have ran as hard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you wouldn't have hustled as hard. And because you did. When the normal person would have just crumbled. You soared. Yeah. Right. Even though it, it could have felt painful. It was. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but but, but I, I mean, think I mean, I'm just saying you soared. I was like, I don't want to ever see my account this low again in life. So it was it, hard, it, but it, it was worth. It gave it. you motivation. Yeah, it did. It did. It might, I think it was one of those like you know, you only eat what you kill, and if you're not out here trying to get it, then you know what you're gonna do. And then I had well, a little see, person depending on me, so I was just like, I gotta be strong for her and I just got to push through and I wanted it really bad like I was really focused and determined and self-motivated to get it done I think a lot of times with entrepreneurships a lot of their ideas come out of their passion Mm -hmm. so this was a passion hobby for me that I was able to turn into a purposeful business um, for me and my clients Wow. okay all right because I got another piece that I want to take that and and go because you, you you said a word I'm going to bring that word on the other side because that people are like, I think they take it for granted, but you, you'll know where I'm going yeah. when we come back. Yeah. Hey folks, this is Garrett um, with Eye to Eye and the lovely Ivanya Easley because this is just a fabulous conversation. If you missed any of it, you need to stay tuned because we're about to go a little bit deeper into the life of Ivanya Easley and her awesome business, Lovey Fashions. Catch you on the other side. See ya.
Hey there, folks out there in podcast land. This is your boy Garrett for Idea to Invention, sitting here with the lovely Ivania Easley. Um, for those who may have missed it and who may not know, Ivania um, Easley is the CEO and founder of Love E Fashion. Um, and you can find her at Love E Fashion. That's L O V E F A S H I O N dot com. Um, and I guarantee you, you can also find her on social media channels. What's of your course. social handle? Um, Love Ivanya. Love Ivanya. <laughs> L O V E V O N Y A. Find her because you need some style in your life. <laughs> need some style in your life. Okay, so when we came out of the last segment, um, we were we were we were talking about how how you began to, to out of coming out of 08 and you were kind of thrust into starting your business and you you know kind of you were doing things in parallel prior to that yeah um and not really seeing the fact that you were laying a foundation so that you could go full force into your business yes right um and for those who are out there listen you may not see what god is doing but he's constantly he he does everything for the glory for his glory and if and if you are doing things according to his will, he will be planting seeds and, and, and opening doors that you may not see have been opened. But when you walk through, no one will be able to close it. It's meant for you. So, I mm, agree. see, we can I always tell my students when you're planting the seed, that's not the time of the harvest. So you just got to be planting the seeds because you don't know when the harvest is going to come. Preach. <laughs> preach. He's like, preach. OK, so. The word, oh, so on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. I was saying that there was a word that you mentioned. Pivot that, or positioning? Mm -mm, this is another <laughs> one. In, in your story, because I, I found it very um, intriguing because and the word was village. Yeah. I don't even know if you said, you, you realize you said it, it's village. And the reason why it was such a pivotal word is that... Let me let me put it this way. Okay, let me get personal. So, from an African American perspective, yeah, our village seems to focus on um, go to school, go to college, yeah, get a job, a good job, a good job, <laughs> and depend on building somebody else's dreams. Exactly. Retire, right? That's w typically, now, and if I'm wrong, y'all out there, hey, hit a brother up and say, no, dude, you're wrong. But for the most part. At least part, during our generation. During our generation, yeah. right? That, that, I mean, my mom, I mean, that was, she was like, you, you doing what? Yeah. You leaving, you leaving that good job? Yeah, yeah exactly. Right? With benefits. With benefits, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you in your story, though, you said that your village did something different. They supported you during this time. Yeah. Right. Even though they may not have fully understood. Yes. So I want you to talk about that because some people, they, they may be struggling with, OK, well, how do I deal with my village? Yeah. When it comes to my passion and my dream and needing to step out and move out. Yeah. Help them understand how did how how do they do Well, that? Uh, my parents, my daughter is their only granddaughter, so they love her. So regardless of what they felt like, well, we don't know what exactly <laughs> Maya doing, but we're not going to let our granddaughter suffer in the process. <laughs> so she was my saving grace. If I didn't have her, I don't know <laughs> how supportive they may have been. Yeah. So they would take her in the summers because they still lived in Charleston. Uh, my dad would send me like money to help with the rent. My girlfriends were like buy me groceries. So, like, that first year was the hardest year um, because I wasn't making consistent money with clients. Now, again, because of the parallel that I was doing, mm -hmm. when I did lose my job, I immediately started dressing the anchors for Fox 5, Channel 2, and Channel 11. Okay. So, I got a good gig right after. The problem is... With creative jobs, not all of them pay. A lot of it is for your resume, for your portfolio. But the good thing is I was meeting people in the green room. And those mm. are the people that be actually became my clients, not the people that I dressed on air. Ah. But because I didn't know any better, I was thinking, oh, I got this job at Fox. And I'm thinking it was like L.A. or Good Morning America. The station right, will pay right. for it. Yeah. Not Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta's market is not big enough. Only L.A. and New York in certain markets. But that is something I had to learn as a 
new person in business that different markets do different things. Mm-hmm. And Atlanta's a big city, but it's not that big that they're going to pay for a wardrobe for right. their anchors. They felt like the anchors should pay for it. The anchors felt like the wardrobe should pay for it. I mean, the station should pay for it. So I was caught in the middle. Like, okay. well, who's going to pay me? Right. So I did it for the experience, but it also opened the door for me to get my first initial clients that were paid. So sometimes you have to do things that put you in a position of an opportunity that it can turn into. So everything I've ever done for free has always come with some kind of paid client from somewhere. But see, that and that's, and that's the thing. <laughs> it, 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 if you look at it holistically, yeah. it wasn't necessarily for free. Yeah. It was just the fact that the access to the money. Yeah. Was it a different route than you anticipated? Exactly, exactly. So a mm. um, lot to learn when I got into the business because as I teach to my students, like I teach a class called Business of Style. What do you teach at? Um, right now we're teaching at Eleanor's Place this year. Okay. Before I was teaching it at the Commerce Club because that's okay. where I was a member. So I switched memberships um, to a woman dome space because I'm really big on supporting women. But we'll get into all that. Right, all right, all right. <laughs> but I really stress the business side behind it because when I first got in this business, I was creative and I had a good eye. I could put outfits together, but I didn't have a lot of good business sense. Part of it because I was young. And the yeah. other part is I had never been an entrepreneur, so I didn't know the rules or how it worked. Mm. And I had to figure it out as I made mistakes and corrected them and figured it out as I went. Yeah. So how how did the um, your educational training in accounting... Now that definitely how, came so, in handy. So, so, so <laughs> it, help, help me understand and help everybody else understand how you took advantage of that knowledge to help your business. Yes. Well, at least with the accounting, even if I didn't have all the business concepts correct, I did at least know how to manage my money in regards to knowing the cost of acquisition for clients, knowing my ROI for when I invested in marketing or knowing the cost of doing business because it's like, oh, I'm charging this client this amount, but you got to subtract, you got to pay an assistant, you got to put gas in your car, mm-hmm. you got to buy lunch. All the posted shipping, all of that is the cost of the job. So you got to yeah. subtract that from the job. So for me, it was like, you know what, I'm glad I did not go to school for fashion because at least I have this business in regards to the finance background that I can at least handle my money part yeah. to make smart decisions when I started to get the money coming in. Awesome. Mm. Okay. So you And so, be able to read a profit and loss statement. So ooh, girl, you see <laughs> you mm. Okay. First question. You said you, you teach a class. Yes. How can people find out about the class? Because see the thing is, you your class and you say, Garrett, yeah, you're off your rocker or not. But your class, to me, would be teaching about fashion, teaching about styling, teaching about how to run your business, and yeah. teaching about the numbers. Yeah, and that is what we teach. That's valuable, <laughs> yeah. right? And that, yeah. To me, that's valuable. So how, how do they find out about your classes? Um, it's funny. I promote it when I'm about to teach. So I'm teaching it this March. After that, I don't promote it again <laughs> until I open it back up. But if anybody is interested, they are welcome to contact me at loveyfashion.com and just say, hey, I heard it on the podcast. Okay. And if they are interested, if they say they heard it on the pack- podcast, I got a little something special for uh, you. Look, I'm, look, y'all, y'all better send me my check. <laughs> I'm giving y'all something, something <laughs> now. Okay. So, but yeah, all my contact information is at my website. So if they contact and just say, hey, I'm interested in the class, then we can talk. You're set. Okay. All right. So I got a qu- another question. You, you had mentioned that when you were doing things in parallel, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and, 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 and folks, I'm going down this path for a reason because I need you to understand a few key concepts. So you were, you were working in parallel um, in corporate America, as well as hustling to do to build out your fashion business, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, corporate America thing shook up. Your village kicked in and helping you survive that transition period. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the midst of that, you realized that you had to cut some things from an expense perspective in order for you to float. Yeah. Um, how hard was that? How, um, how it was hard. <laughs> it was hard, but I was in survival mode, so it was like, you know, what is important? And what's important is a roof, food, and transportation, not cable, nails, and hair. And I don't have time to watch TV because I need to make money. So <laughs> it was like, let's keep it pushing. And luckily, yeah. since my daughter was young, she didn't really feel the effects because okay. we still had a home and she still had food. Right, so, so to, she, to her, yeah. she was just like, yeah. mommy's just working. And, yeah, and exactly. Okay. Exactly. But um, luckily, uh, you know... 
It didn't last too long. Yeah. At the time, it felt like forever. But, you know, when you're going through, it always feels longer. I remember one time I went seven days without any income coming in, and it felt like 70. And then when I got it and I looked back, I was like, well, it was only seven days? It felt Mm -hmm. because at that point I wasn't in a position where I had made enough that it was okay. Yeah. Versus now, um, it's a totally different Ball different game. ball yeah. game. Ooh, look at God. <laughs> You're handling it. Okay, so um, let's talk about your growth. Let's talk about from that year one to year now 15, right? Yeah, of total. Yeah, Of total, right? Yeah. To me, that's there's not many businesses that can say, hey, I've been operating for that yeah. long. Yeah. Um, educate us on, on, on that and, and how you've grown and how you've navigated through the hard times, a good time. Help us understand. Yeah. Um, you know, I got those few good clients from um, Fox 5, the green room. And mm-hmm. what I started to do is, and at the time, I didn't know that this is what it was called, but I figured out my customer discovery and customer persona, even though okay. I just learned the lingo a couple of years ago of like, that is what I That's was what doing. doing. When I met those people and they were really good clients. And the first one, she paid me like a thousand dollars in a day. And I thought, oh my God, I'm rich. Oh, what not? <laughs> because that's not, when you work in corporate America, you may be making money, but it's not usually a thousand dollars a day. Right. Uh, whatever, maybe a week. Right. Uh, if you're at a, a decent job or whatnot. But um, I was like, you know what? I can do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I started trying to go after those same type of people as her. I used her as my prototype or my customer persona to pursue. Like, working professional between this age, busy, don't have the time, don't have the desire, and built my whole, like, this is where I'm going to find these people. So I started to network in professional settings only. I wasn't going to fashion shows, trying to meet other people in fashion. Because those are just peers. They're not going to hire me because they do the same thing I do. Right, right. Versus if I go to the lawyers of Atlanta, networking i'll be the only stylist there talking to these lawyers about well i know you're busy you don't have time you're working eight hours a week but you still got to look a certain Mm -hmm. way to show up in court or for your clients or litigation or whatever then you know i got you so i started putting myself in these professional networking spaces and started to gain clients that way so how did you know mm, how did you know that your niche was going to work because see that's what you were doing you were figuring out what Ivanya's niche was going to be for lovey yeah. fashion. Yeah. How, how did you, when did that click to be like, no, this is it. This is my target. Um, when I started working with Laura, <laughs> uh, <laughs> she was in pharmaceutical sales. She's okay. married. She liked to travel. She was really busy. And I was like, if I had 10 Laura's, and so I started to really just pursue people in that angle. Mind you, I did do all of that, the Disney, the entertainment, mm-hmm. the VH1. And I did all those different jobs. One, because I feel like you are more valuable the more experience you have. And so at this point, there's not any job somebody can present me that I'd say, oh, I don't know how to do that. I wanted to at least know how to do it. So right. at that point, it'll put me in the position of leverage that if you say, hey, I want you to work on this movie, I can choose to do it or choose not to. But it won't be because I couldn't. You it couldn't. was because... I chose not to do it. So, and, and, but that's valuable for people to understand yeah. that you you did certain things that allowed you to gain, for lack of better words, some street cred about what Ivanya can bring to the table. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and the fact that yeah, you know what? No, I can style the the lawyer or or or, or the the always moving doctor or or the accountant. But yes, I can also style the newscaster. Yeah. I can style for this TV show yeah. for this movie. And it, it ends up giving you such a, a a breath of work, yeah, a body of work, yeah. To now, so how many people do you have working for you? Uh, I have ten stylists in Atlanta, and then I have some stylists in LA and New York just waiting on me to bring the market. But that leads into my app that I built, which is how I met your wife. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. So y'all, I hear the music because we got a break coming up, and we're gonna go into our last seg- segment. So listen. Coming into this next segment, we have to talk about your app. Yeah. We have to talk about the purpose of it and how how it is, right? Yes. yes. Um, and then we'll we'll, we'll kind of close out on yeah. Ivanya's nuggets of information okay. when it comes to small business, when it comes yeah. to styling, so that we leave people with a fresh st- uh, understanding of who you are yeah. and what you bring to the table. Yes. Sounds good? Yes, sounds good. All right, folks, this is your Thank boy you. Garrett with the lovely Vanya Easley sitting here, and we are going to catch you on the other side of this break. Do not go away. See ya.
What makes America? You. Me. Every freckle. Every career. Every smile. Every tear. Each family, each friend. It builds and makes us who we are. One community. Every boy, every girl. Each kink, each curl. We wouldn't change a thing because this is who we are. It's our differences and our similarities, our passions and our fears. These are the things that keep us. These are the things that make America. Us, our curls make us. We are America. We make Tangle Master. Hey, everybody out there in podcast land for <laughs> idea to invention. Welcome, welcome back. We are sitting here with your lovely Ivanya Easley, the CEO and founder of Love E Fashions, because you need some style in your life. <laughs> so, um, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Thank you. I've Thor enjoyed it as oh well. My, oh, my God. This, is, this has been... Took me back down memory lane. Stuff really? I hadn't thought about it in a minute. <laughs> it's good to reflect. Yes, it is. So it you is. can see see where you... How and we're in a new came. year, new decade, so see? reflecting way back. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we left the last segment mm -hmm. with uh, wanting to know more about... Because you... I want you to talk about how you met my wife, Sita, right? Because how this relationship yes. came together and then how it ties to the app and yes. how how you are just like expanding and blowing up. Yeah. People need to understand that the hustle is real and that Ivanya is doing it for real. Yeah. So please educate us. Yes. So I, I built this business of clientele. I had good clientele. I'm making good money. Everything's good. And then a couple of years ago, I started to think about, you know, I'm getting older. One day... I'm going to have to stop working. And as an entrepreneur, it's like, okay, well, what is your retirement pension plan like mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur? And so I started to think about my life. And I, one of my clients had wanted to use me. And um, she called really last minute and was like, hey, I got a TV appearance tonight. I was like, tonight? Why you wait till today? Well, I thought I had some. It didn't work out, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, well, I wonder if it was a way that it was a company that she could have ordered a stylist, not me, but somebody on demand that could have went and helped her. Because for me, you have to book me in advance. I have a schedule, you know, right. just like any a photographer or yeah. hair or makeup. It's a schedule that has to be kept. And at the time, my daughter was a little bit younger. So I was like, well, I have to pick her up from school. Like, I don't have time to try to squeeze you in. And she was like, well, I'll Uber her home. I'll buy y'all dinner or whatever. I just need wow. help. Yeah. So it got me to thinking about how I wanted to scale my business beyond me. Because right now it was like I only make money when I service a client. Uh, How can I make money when I am not physically going to do the the work? Yeah. So almost like if I owned a hair salon and you got the hairdressers working in the salon yeah. for the booths. Yeah. I was like, well, let me build this double sided platform where I will connect customers to stylists. And I was already teaching stylists because I started teaching after I got so much experience working in all the different areas of yeah. fashion. Because, you know, it's not just styling. There's movies and TV. And all of that has to be styled totally different. Like, I'm dressing you for real life versus TV yeah. is not the same thing. Because certain things you do on TV, you can't. Do, things you can do in real life, you can't always do on TV. Okay. Because of the distortion from the camera. So, I started teaching people because they would see me out and about. And we started talking. It's like, well, what do you do? Well, you shop for a living? Like, people pay you? I want to <laughs> learn. How did you do that? How did you be able to get enough clientele to make a living yeah. and not just do it on the side. And so I started teaching. And so again, parallel, by the time I stopped teaching, well, I'm still teaching, but when I built the app, I'd already taught like four classes. So those students that graduated were the people that decided to work on my app. So I kind of created my own workforce without really knowing that that's what I yeah. was doing when I was teaching. 
Um, and with this app, you can order a stylist on demand. So the same way you can order a driver, order food, you can actually use the app, download it. We get all your information, height, what you like, budget, um, colors, etc. And then the stylist will call you, confirm everything, and she'll go out and shop for you, deliver, do a style fitting, and whatever you buy, you keep. Whatever you don't, she'll take back to the store. And I made it at an affordable rate because personal stylists are usually known for working with celebrities or high net worth individuals. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, well, what if this app was available to everyone that was just working, like a working professional? You don't have to be a doctor or a lawyer. You could be a school teacher and you wanted a nice dress for your anniversary or your birthday or you want to build your style over time. So my clients have paid four-figure investments to work with me, and that doesn't include the clothes they have to buy. Okay. With the app, we're only charging right now, we're running a special of $75. So from $75 to four-figure, that's a nice, big, steep discount. (laughs) Um, So you're going to get six to ten pieces, and there are companies that are similar, but they're all doing it virtually. I'm the only company giving you a real person. So you have the Stitch Fix trunk club amazon just got into the space last year so because i got into tech i started going to all these tech events last year and really getting involved in the tech community hence how i met your wife wow we okay at the russell building aka rice building (laughs) (laughs) yes the russell center for innovation and entrepreneurship here in atlanta okay well that's phenomenal see now so so okay i'm just letting you know See, they didn't give me all that piece of the information. <laughs> I mean, that's all. Okay, so. so it you, sounds easy. Trust. I've been on the well, journey for a little minute <laughs> of trying yeah, to make it work. Like, but, I sat on that idea for two years because I was just scared. Like, I didn't want to disrupt my life okay. after I out, finally got to a place where, okay, I'm making money. I'm doing what I want to do. I'm traveling. Mm-hmm. Life is good. Why disrupt that? But I felt I wasn't content to just level off there. At that plateau, I wanted to take it to another level. So adding that tech component was a learning curve for me because running a a business like a mom and pop shop type of thing is not the same as scaling and monetizing to be able to sell for millions at some point, which is my goal. So because because you're with the app, you're you're literally um, providing a stylist based on your reputation. Yes. So how do you vet the stylists that are part of your app? Well, because I'm only accepting stylists that graduate from my class. Um, so then, ah, <laughs> so you got to uh. So when they graduate from the class, they all come and assist me on different jobs. So I get to feel their personality out, how they work. And so even this weekend, I like I said, I went to Aspen this past weekend to try my hand at skin just because <laughs> I love to travel when I'm not working. I like to try new experiences. And somebody reached out and was like, hey, I want to book on your app. And so it was like what I built this for came into fruition because I reached out to the stylists, connected them, and I made money while I'm in Aspen and she's down here in Atlanta servicing the client, which is the goal oh, is yeah, to be able it. to grow the business, to have hundreds and thousands of people doing that and take myself out of the equation and just run the business of style, making sure the style is happy, making sure the customer's happy and making sure that they are both pleased with how the experience went because we want to give people... Um, that personal style experience, I feel like you're not getting virtually. Yeah. If you're, somebody's showing you something virtually and then you get it and you don't know how to style it, how to wear it, how to work it, you're going to send it back or you have to go oh, back yeah. and forth. We're closing that gap because I'm there in front of you. Like, oh, it doesn't work. Let's move on to the next piece. Not mail it back right. to me. Then I mail you back something new. Then you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, and they get your professional eye. Exactly. Because if something laying right, you looking all slumpy and lumpy. Yeah. No, no. And with every appointment, we make sure we bring a woman-owned boutique, a woman of color, and we have a percentage that goes back to girls and women nonprofits. So when you're shopping with us, you're doing good at the same time, as well as supporting your local ecosystem and local women entrepreneurs. And I'm creating jobs for the stylists. So that is the big picture goal of why I built the app. So through the app, can they book you? As no. well, or it's, uh, <laughs> you're like, no, you can't. You can only book me through my website. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. You'll see uh, the contact me link on my website. Um, I will definitely help out is my company. So, if you know, it's one of those things like when you're building, you got to be the janitor and the CEO sometimes. So I'll definitely yeah. help out if needed. But the whole point was to have those stylists and be able to give them that work to okay. go and service everybody so okay oh, so, so you it's, can't it's, book it's me through the app but you can definitely book a good stylist that was trained by me so y'all understand 
to book Ivanya personally, you have to go to her website. Yes. At loveyfashions.com. Yes. And at the top, you'll see a very nice contact me. And you'll see everything you need to know about yeah. booking her. Yeah. Now, where can they find the app? It's styled by Love E. Mm-hmm. And it's available on iOS and Android. And all you got to do is go to the App Store, the Google Play Store, and download Style by Lovey. And if you go to my website, there is a link on there that says Style by Lovey, and it has the actual link you can download. But, of course, you have to go to the website from your phone so that you right. can automatically download it. God, we, look, I do y'all. give complimentary style consults. So when people reach out to me and they may decide, hey, I want to talk to you about working with you, we can talk. I can see where they um, fall in and with mm-hmm. their goals. And if I feel like, you know what? you'd be best served using the app, then I direct them to the app. But I'm really trying to direct business to the app and not keep taking clients because the whole point in building the app was to move all the people to to the app. And plus helping all the stylists that have graduated from your class exactly build up their clientele. Yeah. You just keep on giving and giving. (laughs) Y'all, you find you just get up up in this place giving. Okay. So the, one of the two last questions I have Mm -hmm. for you is, Number one, um, I want to be a stylist. I'm in the Atlanta area. What do I do? How, how, do, how do I make it happen? Uh, got to well, take the what's, class. What's your advice? <laughs> okay, sorry. Come, keep on, come got on. Got to take the class and yes. I will teach you. The thing about me teaching is I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning. And I know I also lost a lot of money just because I didn't have the expertise of running the business and having systems and processes and all the stuff that goes on behind the creativity. I find that creative professionals, sometimes you're so caught up in the creativity, Mm. you're forgetting that this is still a business. It still has to be ran as a business the same way a law firm and any other traditional job is ran as a business. So I always encourage any entrepreneur, whether they're trying to do my industry or not, lots and lots of research building relationship. I have a lot of relationship equity that has came in handy when you don't always have financial funds. I'm completely bootstrapped. I haven't taken any outside money and been able to grow my company to six figures. I made five figures this month already just from signing two really, really big clients in the first four days of January. So I'm trying to scale to a nice big number because I would like to invest into women owned companies when I get to that 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 place. Yes. Oh, congratulations. See, y'all, another word. See, Miss Yvonne, keep dropping these little nuggets of words and y'all don't, y'all ain't catching them. These gems. (laughs) She said she has built relationship equity. Relationship equity is almost the same as cash because a relationship can easily, just like cash can can fuel exactly. you from going from one point to another. A relationship can, may sometimes can take you further. Exactly. Exactly. And because that relationship may see something that you have no idea is there. Yeah. And that opportunity. Look at, look at yeah. what God is doing. y'all. It's like um, what they say about favor. and can get you through the door sometimes if nothing yep. else can. So um, I definitely believe in um, God's favor on my life. Mm, this was good. See, and you even answered my second question in the midst of the other first one. Oh, well, <laughs> Miss Easley, it has truly been my pleasure. Awesome. Thank you for having Thank me. I'm really honored so, so to be much. invited to be on your podcast. Oh, so really you're so it. welcome. And y'all listen, you better find Miss Easley. You can find her on her website at loveefashion.com. And social media, what's your handle? Love Yvonne on Instagram. Love Yvonne on Instagram. But mm. everything is on my website. So you can find all my social media handles on um, Instagram. And if you Google Yvonne easily, all my stuff will everything come up too. Up. So, yeah. Ah, well, thank you so, so much, no, y'all. Thank, oh, you. thank you. It's such a pleasure. And y'all, you know what? Keep doing what you're doing. It's meant to be, it's meant to happen. Keep God first. And as we always say, take care, be blessed, and be a blessing. Peace. Peace.